What is up, everybody, and welcome to Studio de Jefre, the daily Cowboys situation for you. Uh, I want to go through some of the matchups that are going to determine the game, Cowboys versus Tampa Bay. Plus, we do have news on a Dak Prescott restructure. They're, uh, they're flipping some more money around. What could that be for? We'll talk about that as well, but I want to start with my matchups, and then we'll also get to our mailbag. So I broke up the matchups between the Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers into four categories, okay? Strength on strength. Pray for them. Need to win it. And wild card. Those are our four categories for the matchups that are going to matter. Cowboys versus Tampa Bay Buccaneers in two days. (laughs) Two days away. Strength on strength, number one. And this one's going to be very important for the Cowboys. It is Shaq Barrett, the pass rusher for Tampa Bay against Lyle Collins. Now, first of all, he needs to play, but I hadn't seen anything that hints that he wouldn't, and they played or practiced in pads yesterday. So Collins should be ready to roll. And if he is, his job is really, 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 really important because Shaq Barrett, for my money, is probably the best pass rusher on Tampa Bay's team, and he's a handful. He's a really, really good player, and Lyle Collins is going to have to hold his own or better if you want to have a chance, including, you know, uh, protecting Dak is probably the more important one because I don't worry about LC in terms of the run game. The dude's a monster. He'll move Shaq Barrett around. It's the protection that is going to be the most important. Next, strength on strength matchup is literally just flip the teams, same position. Right tackle Tristan Wirfs for Tampa Bay, who was a stud rookie last year. Incredible player against Tank Lawrence, who hasn't seen any real action yet, which I'm cool with. I am team bubble wrap. But when you haven't even really barely practiced, can you be in top shape? Can you be ready to play 80, 70, 80% of the plays? Can you bring to the table what we're used to you bringing to the table? That is a matchup of two absolute monsters as well. Tristan Wirfs versus Tank Lawrence. Now, this last one is a little bit of a projection to call it strength on strength, but it's what the Cowboys need if they're going to have uh, a shot at having a decent to good defense. Trevon Diggs versus Mike Evans. Mike Evans is a giant wide receiver. He's a stud, 6'5". Um, better separator than he gets credit for, but it's also the sort of wide receiver that you want Trevon Diggs playing against. Trevon Diggs is not a super athletic when you're comparing to super athletic receivers and corners. You know, he's sort of a long, competitive, strong, feisty, ball skills sort of guy. So the matchup that you would want for Trevon Diggs is the bigger wide receivers. So I'm going to call this strength on strength. I'm putting Trevon Diggs up there. I'm believing. You're going into week one. Why not believe? Now, the second category of matchups, pray for them. Pray for the Cowboys' interior offensive line. Connor Williams, Tyler Biotish, Connor McGovern, Come on, Zach. Come on, Zach. Sneak out two negative results and then get on a private plane. Uh, Vita Vea and Ndamukong and Sue. Ndamukong Sue is good. Vita Vea is a monster. Vita Vea is a problem. Now, it's not like he's some explosive elite pass rusher, but he will absolutely occupy multiple blockers. If you think you're blocking him with one guy, he's going to steal that person's soul, and uh, he's going to run them over, place them on the ground, and then he's going to be in your quarterback's lap. Vita Vea is a problem. Not having Zach Martin, that hurts because you are playing against probably the best nose tackle in football. That dude is an absolute load. Next i not going to make it all negative. Pray for them. Tampa Bay's corners against C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper. Tampa's corners, to me, are fine. Like, Carlton Davis is fine. Um, Jamel Dean is fine. Sean Murphy Bunting is fine. But none of them is a Pro Bowl caliber player. They're better than the Cowboys group, but they're not a good or great group of cornerbacks. And I think they are about to go against a highly motivated and highly badass couple of dudes. And you can throw Michael Gallup in there if you like. 
I just think that we're going to see this year that Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb are here. Michael Gallup is here. And it's all good. You love having three really, really good receivers. But CeeDee Lamb or Amari Cooper, whichever one is finding single coverage against Tampa Bay's corners, pray for that man. Then flip it. Pray for the Cowboy Corners not named Trevon Diggs against Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin. Reports out of Tampa are that Antonio Brown is kind of looking like old Antonio Brown. And I don't know if you guys remember old Antonio Brown, but he was the best receiver in football for a little while. Uh, And Chris Godwin is just an all-around really good player. Uh, Kind of, to me, Chris Godwin is kind of a Michael Gallup plus where it's not like it's one thing. He's just good. He's a solid route runner. He's good after the catch. He's really good with a contested football in the air. So um, Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis, pray for those men. The third section of categories as we preview this is need to win it. You got to win this matchup if you want to win the football game, okay? And in this case, because I care about the Cowboys and not the Bucks, I'm going to tell you what matchups the Cowboys need to win. Number one, Randy Gregory slash Micah Parsons against left tackle Donovan Smith. Tampa's offensive line, to me, has three strong points, and that is right tackle Tristan Wirfs, um, center Ryan Jensen, and left ta- or left, left guard Ali Marpet. If you're going to win against their offensive line, you'd like it to be against right guard Alex Kappa and against Donovan Smith, the left tackle. Because the guys going against the left tackle, I think, have the better chance to make impact plays. If Oso Digizuwa wants to make some big plays, I'm down with that. That'd be lovely. But I think that your guys who have the best chance is you need Randy Gregory and Micah Parsons when he lines up out off the edge to rush the passer. Those are the dudes that you need to go get after Tom Brady and make him uncomfortable. That would be very, very nice. The tough part is what you really want to do is get pressure in the middle. I just don't know if the Cowboys have the horses for it. I think in there you'd be banking on Odigi Zuwa in his first professional game to be the guy to make things happen. Need to win it matchup number two. Zeke and Tony Pollard versus Devin White and Levante David. One of the best linebacker cores in football, but Zeke does look reinvigorated, looks quick, looks spry, looks lovely. Tony Pollard, obviously good at making people miss. If you can get some plays where you're putting your running backs in space, you got to be able to beat those dudes. And Devin White is a tank, and Levante David is just an incredible all-around linebacker. So those guys got to make those guys miss. Final category is wild card. Micah Parsons is a badass in so many different ways. How is he going to affect the game? Micah Parsons is the wild card. Could he end this game with a sack and a half, an interception, a batted ball, 13 tackles, and a forced fumble? Maybe, because that's the sort of talent that he is, and that's what he's been showing in uh, camp. So, Micah Parsons, wild card. Those are your matchups to know. Let me hit a few quick mailbags here. Multiple questions on the Twitter at JC1053 from Mike Draft 21 and Aaron Hope. Both of them want to know what is the point of the DAC restructure this morning, which if you haven't seen it, what that means is the Cowboys took $6.25 million of DAC's uh, salary this year. They made it a signing bonus, which what does that do? Creates $5 million in cap space this year. $3.75 million in cap space next year, and you'll pay the piper later on the DAC money. So what are you doing? It's a good question. I think for the Cowboys, it's mostly looking forward. They have plenty of cushion if they wanted to sign a player now, like plenty, plenty. They could sign a $20 million player, I think, right now if they wanted to. I think the Cowboys' goal is to prepare to move into next year with room because they're going to have work to do against the salary cap to get under it and to try to have spending money. So I think they're making moves now to just give them free money that they can then carry over into next year. But if not, I hope it's to get a deal done with Randy Gregory before the season starts. That's what I would like to see uh, be done. So do it. Do it, Jerry. Uh, my buddy Waddle wants to know, what week are you going to climb aboard Team Tank with at Oh Thank Kevin and I? Chill out, Waddle. It's not time. Uh, if the Cowboys go like one in... Six, I'll jump on Team Tank, but they're not going to do that. 
Reggie Atatula wants to know, what position would Rowdy fare best at? Rowdy, the Cowboys mascot. I guess running back, because it's the least important. No, he's too big a target. He'd get tackled too easily. Could he get in the way on the offensive line? Maybe he'd be a distraction at fullback. If you see a guy in full cowboy mascot get up running at you, that could be scary. Um, I don't. Rowdy would have a tough time. At CD Piglet. What up, Crumb? He says, how often would you like to see the Cowboys blitz against a QB that's been bottom five versus pressure the last two seasons? But also is the great Tom Brady with weapons versus a below average secondary. Yeah, you said all of it. That's what goes into the thinking there. The Cowboys have shown that they're going to pressure people on third down. That's what they showed in the preseason. If that holds, it holds. If it doesn't, who knows? I think they'll pressure people. I worry about the Cowboys secondary holding up behind it, behind a really smart quarterback that's going to know where to go with the football. But, hey, it's week one. We're going to start off. Let's go. Be aggressive. Get after the quarterback. Uh, let's see here. On what position would you spend the money we got by restructuring contracts, or would you extend Michael Gre- Michael Gallup or Gregory? I would extend Randy Gregory, but they may just be holding dollar dollar bills, y'all, until they need them next year. All right, leave in the comments what you want to hear about tomorrow. Trust the tape coming up a little bit later today with Brian Broaddus and I. Get your college football NFL draft fix. That'll be coming up. Uh, what else do I want in the comments? What's your favorite color? Yeah, just what's your favorite color? Mine might be purple. Why is my camera being fuzzy? All right, well, remember, you have no idea what anybody's going through, so be cool to everyone. I love you. Bye.